Okay, so let's solve these bad boys. Exponential population model. You, this is just an exponential growth model. If population P is changing at a constant percentage rate each year, this is not continuous. Uh, then we have P of T, that just means population over time, equals P0, which is initial population. And in parentheses, you have 1 plus R. That's growth. You remember, if, if it was decay, it would say 1 minus R. You guys remember that? Okay. So it's 1 plus R, so you know it's um, growth. And of course, T is time. Now, what's really, really important here is that your R, your rate, is not going to be a percentage. So if I tell you there's a 5% increase rate, that is a 0.05 R value. Never use the number that has a percent sign next to it in the formula. Okay? Okay. All right. Let's find some exponential growth and decay rates. So tell whether the population model is growth or decay, and then find the percent rate of growth or decay. So basically, is it growth or decay, and then solve for R. And it wants it as a percent. Cool beans? Yes? Okay, so I get how to solve for, like, if they're decaying or decay. Yeah. But, like, when you solve for R, do you plug, like, how do you plug in for P? You don't. Okay. That's the thing. Well, so the first one for San Jose, what you're supposed to do is look at the object that has an exponent. It's the uh, 1.0064. Is that bigger than 1 or smaller than 1? Since it's bigger than 1, this is a 1 plus R situation. So this is growth for San Jose. This is growth. Now what we do is we say the 1.0064 is your 1 plus r. So if you were to just subtract 1 from both sides, subtract 1 from both sides, what you get is that r equals 0 0.0064. The directions do want it as a percent. It says the percent rate. So we do have to move this back to a percentage. So you move your decimal to the right twice to get the 0.64% growth rate. Pretty easy, isn't it? Solving for R is not that bad if you can see what has an exponent. It's not an unknown. So the next one in Detroit, the thing with an exponent is a 0 0.9858. Is that growth or decay? It's decay. We recognize it as decay because that is less than 1. Now, the textbook has us setting it up as 1 plus R equals this number. And when you do that, uh, you go, wait, doesn't 1 plus R mean growth? Well, remember, R could be positive or negative. So if you were to use the 1 point R, or 1 plus R, excuse me, and you get a negative R, that would have told you decay as well. But I would rather just go, well, I see it's decay, which means that R must be set up like this. Again, you could have used the 1 plus R that's in the box up above, and you would have gotten a negative R. A negative rate tells you decay. But I would rather know, oh, I forgot to write the word decay. I would rather recognize it as a 1 minus R situation. And now we just get R by itself. Well, you could add R and subtract the 1 or 0 0.9858 to get that the decay rate is what is this decimal? Not even can pretend to know. 0 0.0142. We all know how to subtract. And now you just move your decimal to the right twice so you can get it as a percent. So R is 1, 2, 1.42% 1. decay. I forgot my C. Come on. There we go. And of course, this is a growth rate. So starting out easy peasy. Comfortable? Not scared yet? It says determine the exponential function that has initial value 12 and increasing at a rate of 8% per year. That just means to write the equation. That's all we want you to do. So why do I have a question like this? In case I hit you with a word problem on the test, I would hope that you know how to build the equation. 
Well, you know initial value, which would be P sub 0, and increasing, so growth, it tells you 1 plus R. And what does R equal? There we go, 0 0.08. Not the decimal, not the 8%, 0 0.08. So the formula is just going to be P of T equals 12 times 1 plus 0 0.08 to the T, which of course is 1.08. If we left it like that, would it be all right? Or should we simplify it to 12 times 1.08? I think you should clean it up. But I didn't want to jump right to the answer, just so I didn't want anybody to say, well, wait, 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 how did I know that it was 1.08? But it doesn't really matter. I mean, as long as you're comfortable, you'd get the same answers. But I think it looks better as 12 times 1.08 to the, to the 12. Where did that 12 come from? Yeah, no, but that's not supposed to be there. That's supposed to be a T. That's a variable. There we go. That one. Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. So now we know how to write an equation. Of course, you should have already known that. Probably did this extensively last year, and I was a few honors. Suppose a culture of 100 bacteria is put into a Petri dish, and the culture doubles every hour. Oh. Well, first of all, is this growth or decay? Growth. Obviously growth. But I, I know that P sub 0 is 100, but what is my rate? What is R? Is R 2? No, because R is the second power. R is 1. R is 1. And here's, here's why R is 1. If I say the population doubled, that means it increased by 100%. If you started with 10, you need another 10 in order to double. That is a 100% rate. So your R is 1. Because this doubles every hour represents a 100% growth rate. So it says predict when the number of bacteria will be 350,000. Formula, P of T is, and actually, let's see, P sub 0 is 100, 1 plus R raised to the T. Plug in what we know. Uh, we know P of T. P of T is 350,000. 100 times 2 to the T. Um, you're missing one zero on the 350,000. No, you're missing a zero on the 350,000. Mine is clearly there. No, you! <laughs> yeah. Crap happens. Thank you, though. Alrighty, so, I mean, we're just going to solve for T. It says predict when, and remember, that's because this is from a portion of the textbook where they expected you to use graphing technology. I expect you to be able to do it by hand for my test. So, what would we do first trying to solve for T? What would be our first step? Divide both sides by 100. Of course, you'd have a scientific calculator. Now I can take a couple zeros off the 350,000. So it should just be 3500, zero, zero, no zeros missing this time, equals 2 raised to the t. We need to solve for t. That means we need exponential base 2 to disappear. How do we make exponential base 2 disappear? Log, log base. base 2. There we go. So we need to do log base 2 of both sides of this equation. Log base 2 of the left and log base 2 of the right. Of course, on the right side, those are gone. Kai, pay attention. He didn't even hear me say his name. Kai, pay attention. So t is log base 2 of 3,500. And we need to be able to evaluate this on our scientific calculator. How do we do that again? Who said that? Casey did. Change of base. So on our scientific calculator, we're going to get log of 3,500, or ln, it doesn't matter, divided by log 
of 2 or ln, it doesn't matter. So as long as they both say log or both say ln, you are in good shape. And you should have gotten somewhere around 11.77. Yeah? I thought ln was log base 2. It is. And that doesn't change the equation at all? Well, change of base says that you can change the base to anything you want as long as you use the top and bottom, as long as you use the same base on the top and bottom. So that log base 2 of 3,500, I could call it ln of 3,500 over ln of 2. If I was really crazy, I could say log base 5 of 3,500 over log base 5 of 2. You can get away with changing the base to anything you want as long as you use the same one on top and bottom. Okay. Now we choose log or we choose ln because those calculators or those buttons are already on our calculators. So yeah, you should get 11.77. Uh, and I believe our time was in hours. Yep. So it would take us almost 12 hours to double, almost 12. And you didn't have the ability to use logarithms in the beginning of the chapter. You would have had to have solved this using a graphing calculator when the book presented it, and I don't like that. That's why I moved it to the end of the chapter. <clears throat> what do you guys think? It's not too bad, is it? That's pretty easy, right? I mean, honestly, it's algebra two. Teach the exact same thing in algebra two. The radioactive decay model, ooh, half-life. Exponential decay functions model the amount of time, A, of a radioactive substance present in a sample. The number of atoms of an element that change from a radioactive state to a non-radioactive state is a fixed fraction per unit time. Process is called radioactive decay. And the time it takes for a half of a sample to change its state is the half-life. So the reason why, if I had to guess, I mean, I didn't come up with the equations, but the reason why I think our chemists and physicists and stuff like that would want to use half-life is because, well, first of all, some of these radioactive things decay over an extremely long period of time. So a thousand just, years. Thousands, maybe millions. It depends on the, it probably depends on the, the substance we're talking about. So, nuclear you know. Nuclear waste just, from nuclear power, from like yeah. when atom splitting, that mm -hmm. takes 1,000 years to stop being radioactive. Yeah, so. That's what I'm thinking. I, I think that they would want to use half-life because it's easier. You get smaller numbers and you can talk about how long it takes for it to be halfway gone, things like that. So before I dive into the equation, what you need to understand is that the exponent is slightly different than what we had up above. Up above, we were just raised to the t. But now we have a t divided by h. h is the length of the half-life. The reason why this works is, is it, it's a trick of exponents. Okay, If you remember that when you raise a power to a power, you multiply those exponents, this formula could be thought of as saying this. And that 0 0.5 was actually 1 minus 0 0.5 when you're talking about decay, right? So you're actually talking about the, the h root of a number. It's kind of scary to talk about, so it's just easier to put it as a t over h. And the 0 0.5 is coming from the fact that it is decay, so it would have said 1 minus 0 0.5. So we're losing half of our stuff. Oops. It, yeah, t divided by h. Mm -hmm. Of course, a0 is just the initial amount again. <clears throat> you need to be careful. Watch the questions. Make sure that your t and your h are in the same units. Very, very, very important. t and h are in the same units. And I couldn't fit an example on this side of the page, so we've got to flip it over to get to one. Half-life. I hit next. I'm just waiting. There we go. Suppose the half-life of a radioactive substance is 20 days. Ooh, okay. H equals 20. And there are 5 grams present initially, so A sub 0 initial amount is 5. Find the time when there will be one gram remaining. 
So we don't know T. How could you tell that 20 was H instead of it being T? I'm sorry? How could you tell that H was 20 and not T was 20? Because it says that the half-life is 20. So the half-life is H. Now, if I had said, hey, it took this amount of time to cut in half, what is the half-life? You wouldn't have known H, and I would have given you the time that it took for it to cut in half. <clears throat> Find the time when there will be one left. So our formula. I'm just going to write the generic. A of t equals A of 0, 0 0.5 to the t over h. Not an n, that's an h. Cool. Let's fill it out. A of t is 1 now. We started with 5. 0 0.5. We don't know t, but we do know that h is 20. And I wrote on my paper. Doesn't matter what I wrote on my paper. Let's just put that down. Yes, we can solve this by hand. We need to start solving for t. Where do we begin? Divide by five on both sides. See, one over five is 0 0.2. Now, right here. I don't think you should use log base 0 0.5. I think it will be easier, less work, for us to use either standard log, you know, common log, or just use ln right now. I like log. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. So why would I want to do that? I would want to do that. Do you have a question for me? No, I'll ask it. Okay. I would want to do that. Because of the property that says when your argument has an exponent, you could bring that exponent to the front of the logarithm. The result then is log of 0 0.2 equals t over 20 log of 0 0.5. Again, we're trying to get t by itself. Yes? So what she's trying to, so what you're saying is, you mean before I move the exponent? So before I move the exponent, if I wanted to subtract to have both logs on the same side, I would have log of 0.2 minus log of 0.5 to the t over 20. And because I would have the subtraction of two logarithms, that would create a single logarithm with a fraction in the argument, right? That fraction would not have been pretty. That fraction would have been 0.2 over an exponential, 0.5 to the t over 20. And could we still get to the answer? Yes, but you would be doing more work. You're not wrong, it is possible, but you'd be doing more work than it's worth. Okay, you, you could do it, you could. I just don't think it's worth the amount of effort it would take. You guys like fractions? Of course not, nobody does, except for me. So I think it would be best right now to cancel fractions. How do we get rid of the fraction? Yeah. You just multiply by 20 on both sides. So you can put a 20 here and a 20 here, like that, and these 20s are gone. We now have, and if you're okay with it, I'm going to switch the order of the equation, just so my variables on my left. t times the log of 0 0.5 equals 20 log of 0 0.2. And I think it's pretty obvious what you're supposed to do now. You've got to divide both sides by log of 0.5. And you do have the ability to type this on a calculator. So you just do log of 0 0.2, multiply by 20. And I'm talking about on a scientific because you won't have your graph and calculator. And then you would just divide by the log of 0 0.5. Wait, my calculator, I have to write the log first. Like I Which one? Let me see it. Which calculator log. do you have? Nope, that's not the camera. No, that one you need to do the number first. 
So right. on, your 30, so I... on the 30XA, you have to do the argument first. So for that one, you would do <clears throat> 0.2 log and then times 20. Make sure you hit the equals key or enter or whatever that button is. And then hit divide by 0.5 log and you will have to hit the enter key one more time at the end, at the end to get the answer. Should have been 46.44 days. And there it is. You don't need a graphing calculator to solve these kinds of questions. All you need is a big old juicy brain. And we all have one of those, most of us. What's that? It'd be nice to have one. <clears throat> well, you could always ask me what it's like. Nothing, not a single chuckle. All right, you know what? I don't know why I waste my good material on you guys. Okay, modeling a rumor, logistic modeling. Venice High School eek, eek, has 2,400 students. Bob, Carol, Ted, and Alice. I don't have any of those people in here, do I? No. Bob, Carol, Ted, and Alice, they start a rumor. All oh, these mean old people. And this rumor spreads logistically. This models it. It tells you how many students have heard the rumor by the end of day T. How many students have heard the rumor by the end of day zero? <laughs> no. You have to plug in zero. Okay, just guess one. All right. <laughs> so part A, S of zero. Whoops, I, mean, I, I did S sub zero, sorry. S of zero. 2,400 divided by one plus 39 e to the zero. What is e to the zero? That's one. <laughs> So what this gives us is 2,400 divided by 40. Sixty people. <clears throat> so what does this mean in the context of this question? <clears throat> First of all, it means I made this question up and it was very hard to make up my own question. Second of all, you have to imagine, okay, the day that Bob, Carol, Ted, and Alice decided to start this rumor, let's just assume it was in like eighth period or something, okay? Meaning they just immediately said, okay, everybody, there's four of us. Let's all tell as many people as we can right now in our classes. And that is day zero. It's the beginning day because the day was already over, if you want to think of it like that. They didn't have a full day of spread anymore. So when you say the first day when T equals one, you're talking about after those four people made sure the initial 60 knew the rumor. You guys, does that make sense? So we're saying initially, even though four people came up with the idea, the initial number of people that were going to spread this rumor is 60. It says, how long does it take for 2,000 students to hear this rumor? Yikes. Well, that's S of T. We don't know time. So what you do is you go 2,000 equals 2,400 over 1 plus 39e to the negative 0.9t. And can we solve this by hand? We absolutely can. But we're not going to. We could, but we're not going to. Because I don't want to. That's why. Let's always wait for this graphic okay, calculator program that. to open. And by the magic of video editing, we have a graphing calculator on the screen. Cool. Still. So what you're going to do, is you're going to go to y equals. And you obviously are not going to use these functions that I have in here already. All right. Right here for y1, you're going to use your equation. I would use a stacked fraction. Don't use the 2,000. The 2,000 is going to be your y2. So math, frac, n over d. If you don't have the graphing calculator that has the ability to use a stacked fraction, one, I'm sorry, and two, that just means you need to be a master of exponents, okay? You make sure that your denominator is, the whole thing is wrapped in parentheses, otherwise it's not going to work. So the top of this fraction is 2,000. Two, one, two, three. 
No, it's not 2400. I'll be okay. There we go. 2400. The bottom is 1 plus 39. And E is right here above the LN. So second LN of 0, negative. Don't use the minus sign. Make sure you use the negative symbol. Negative 0.9. Nine and of course we're not gonna use T, we just use X. Can you make it use T if you if you make it use T, it's going to give you an error or it's just gonna graph a straight line because it doesn't view that T as a variable. If you wanted to use T as a variable, you have to change the mode of the calculator to parametric mode, and you don't want to do this in parametrics. And we're just gonna set this equal to Y equals two thousand. Okay, now here's the thing. You're not gonna want to hit graph. I mean, look what Y values we're talking about. We're talking about Ys in the thousands. So you want to think a little bit ahead, okay? And remember that your X is... Should is... we be writing 24,000, not 2,000? No, it's 2,000. 2,400. No, no, we started with 2,400. We want it to end at 2,000. Oh, I was looking at the wrong area. You know, we're graphing this. So we're saying that this right here is Y1, and this right here is Y2. So I'm going to go to my window, and I'm going to use a little bit of intelligence. X is days. So I'm going to go 0 to, I mean, I don't know how many days this is going to take. I'm just going to guess 20. I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea. Okay, 20 might be too many. 20 might not be enough. We'll just have to find out. Our X scale, go by 1s. Uh, yeah, 20 tick marks, that's fine. Y minimum, 0, that's great. Now check this out. You're trying to figure out where this thing crosses the line 2,000, correct? So I, I like my crossings to be somewhere in the middle of my screen. So I'm going to go to like 3,000 or 4,000. I'll just do 3,000. And I just divide by 10. So I'm going to say tick. There, now there's 10 tick marks. And I'm going to hit graph. And I'm going to hope that it took less than 20 days. And if it didn't, I'll just change the window. You see how slow the graph, graphing calculator is graphing? It's because it's thinking very hard. <clears throat> I think we have made it. It looks like the answer is going to be somewhere around right here-ish. Dude, it is struggling. There we go. We need this intersection point. Intersection points are found in this menu, in the calc menu. Second, the trace button. You're calculating and intersect. So five. It says, is this blue thing the first curve? And I go, yes. It says, is this red thing the second curve? Yes. Would you like to take a guess? I would. We'll just scroll over to where we think the answer is. Get really close to it. That's close enough. And hit enter. It's thinking, oh, looks like it took a little bit less than six days. About 5.86 days. So a lot less than 20. But I didn't know. I was taking a guess. 5.86 days. Whoa, it's lagging so bad that it didn't even see that I drew an eight. Let's go very slow. There it is. And that is the end of section 3.2.